Hey, what's up studs? Ryan here or Amador Productions with my review of a Lego Monkey Kid set. I know it's not Lego Star Wars, but oh my goodness, I am in love with some of Lego Monkey Kid. Not quite the mechs because I'm just not a huge mech fan, but my goodness, some of Lego Monkey Kid is absolutely killer for me and I'm super hyped to bring you guys some reviews. This is set number 80013, Monkey Kid's Team Secret HQ. Bit of a weird name there, honestly. It has 1,959 pieces in the set and in the United States, I paid $170 for this model so definitely not cheap however it very well may be worth it and I very much think so because I am in love with this set beyond what I could have imagined uh, when I first heard of what monkey kid could be so top of the box here going to show some artistic uh, interpretations of the actual lego figures you're getting in here and that's kind of like in the same animation as the tv show is going to be which I am probably going to watch honestly I think I'm full in on monkey kid I think this is going to become a monkey kid youtube channel just kidding star wars still going to be primary but oh man i i hope you guys uh give this a chance to say the least so you get eight characters in the set here with my pigsy monkey kid sandy general ironclad grunt roar and snort i think snort's going to be the more popular of those three there really cool to get pigsy in this set i also have his food truck i'll be doing a review on that uh, at some point here in the coming days or if not already the link down below that has a whopping not one not two not three not four but five instruction manuals pretty insane number of manuals and something else really cool about what the instructions for monkey kid is bringing to the table compared to maybe any other set is i think they are the most fun instructions lego has ever created this is really going to add a lot to build experience i think for kids especially that want to you know feel like they've accomplished something when they complete a part of a build you can see there is a basically progress bar at the bottom here that's going to go along as we build so you can kind of see him moving along the pathway there when you complete a character here it kind of tells you who they are it's monkey kid so that's really neat but i think maybe the coolest part about this is when you finish a kind of section or like a, a part of a build so it's like the first part of the mech here when we finish this it's going to give us a very nice little thing here it's like when you finish things like this kind of has like this little explosion kind of i don't know it's like a feedback so i really like that they were able to do something like this which i had never thought of before but actually works really nicely for a theme like this i think this is really fun obviously mainly for like chinese markets and exclusively at lego stores in the u.s as of now but uh i think it really has some real potential with stuff like this being so fun we'll see the entire boat is able to open up which of course is going to be a feature we'll be taking a look at and i will say this is going to be more of a surface level look at what this set is and what monkey kid is in general at this time i haven't seen the show i don't know any of the lore i don't know what all the little details and things are what the cat's name is stuff like that so don't expect like the the closest most intense detail look at this but from a pure lego fan like what can this set do for you type of review that's what i'm going for here so let's take a look at all the characters our first character up is mai and she has a beautiful dragon print on her torso just a very nice touch there kind of something you might not notice at first but it actually just works in very well to that design the back of the torso is going to be the tail of the dragon there nice green hands her hair piece is a very nice kind of chinese look there obviously that's kind of what they're going for with this theme and i really like that i will also note that i really love the uh, green that they added to the end of her hair at the front there i think that's a nice uh, little touch there to give the character a little bit more uniqueness she's got a nice smile on that front face if we remove her uh, hair piece there you'll see she has a more angry or fighting face on the back and then it also does include a little helmet for her so you can throw that on there you can see it's a very beautiful looking helmet there in all white and then the front kind of uh, with some gold and more of those scales like the dragon has and i will also like to say that she's a very cool kind of ninjago style uh, lightsaber style hilt for her sword and it's uh, it's a nice looking figure it got a very good color scheme that's kind of all uh working together and playing off each other with their gold green and white with the gold, the green, and the white. Very cool character and a nice introduction to her, I think. This is Pigsy. We'll start down at the bottom. He's got some mid-sized legs there, the posable small legs, essentially, with some small prints for his pants. He also does have a really epic looking torso. He's kind of wearing a sleeveless shirt there, and you can tell because he's also got no blue on his arms, so that's kind of neat to see. I really like the logo on the back there for his uh, food truck business. And a little interesting detail there 
there with the fork with one of the uh, bent prongs. He's got a hot dog stud shooter there, which is quite interesting. And of course, his face is very good looking. They've given him a bit of an intriguing look. He looks like he's kind of angry, but you could also probably uh, interpret that as being inquisitive. So I really like that you can kind of get that in two uh, lights there. And then we also have the little chef hat on him. Who doesn't like the chef hat? Of course, Monkey Kid, the main character of the show here, he's got the staff with the uh, lightsaber blades on both sides there in gold, and they are extra long, so they're more like a Darth Maul lightsaber blade, which is kind of cool. Hopefully, we'll see those brought over to Star Wars in uh, light gray, but he's got a very uh, mean, mugging looking face there. He's got the headphones around his neck, of course, to appeal to the kids of today. He's got a little bandana on around his head there, and again, this is going to really uh, mash and clash with uh, Ninjago, I think. Decent torso print, great looking dual molded legs there. The red and black, uh, you can never go wrong. And some great printing on that as well to kind of tie it all together. And if you needed to know, that is what his second face looks like with a little bit of face paint on there and quite a wild smile. This is General Ironclad, who is one of the bad guys. Obviously, we see some design cues kind of used in sets as well, and kind of vice versa, interchangeably between the figures and the sets there, with kind of the nose ring on him, which is great to see. Obviously, the bull horns are epic looking on these characters and we have a nice pauldron for him kind of like a star wars commander would have uh, you get a pauldron there very cool looking back print with a little bit of pink shining through there which i think really ties in well with the pauldron that he has and the front obviously with his abs you can see underneath there in pink underneath the helmet here you'll find a regular old orange face so nothing super special about that unfortunately for people that maybe wanted special face prints on these guys and then as far as his weapon goes he's just got kind of some fire on an axe which is pretty nuts Grunt, Roar, and Snort are all the same here. You can see all three of them, just exactly the same, just different weapons and accessories kind of on them. And they are slightly different than uh, a general ironclad in that they have different color arms and obviously missing like the pauldron and stuff. So there are small differences like that, but like the helmet and the uh, torso and back print are gonna be the same. This guy's got some giant engines on his backpack, which are pretty wild. So I decided to show you him up close. And of course the horns on these guys compared to general ironclad are gonna be pink versus the gray that he has. Has. So nothing really different on this guy versus General Ironclad though. Here we have Sandy, who's the big fig in the set. Very good looking, has a very awesome weapon, which kind of looks like a bit of a paddle, but also has like some bullhorn styling on top there. Again, not sure what significance that may play in the show or to the theme, but that is something that he's got. He's got kind of a beaded necklace on in purple, which is kind of odd looking. Has a great orange mohawk. I have heard that kids love mohawks, so... I think that is going to be real attractive there. Obviously, the nice orange beard as well doesn't hurt. The blue arms and hands can rotate just like you would expect. It is kind of a two-in-one, though, so you can actually hold objects like this, and then it's also wide enough at the base or bottom area of the hand where you can hold, like, a leg of a minifig and have them, hold, like, pick up minifigs. So that's kind of cool. And then, of course, the legs... You can see some uh, six-pack abs in there, the legs. Very nicely detailed, wearing some sweatpants. Nice little bit of uh, pink there on the feet. Nice stripes on the side. Very great overall. Just a beautiful looking big figure. I think this one's going to be real attractive and get a lot of people in the door maybe on some of these sets that are into big figs. The set also includes some number of side builds, more or less, that can also integrate into the ship, which we'll get to when we get there. But we have a mech for Monkey Kid, a little, <laughs> basically mini food truck pig thing for uh, Pigsy there. A couple of General Ironclad's troops here on a larger boat. And another little boat we have Mai here, and I actually really like the design aspect on the bottom of this where it's kind of curved, so I don't know, you just get a nice little roll to that sometimes. Stud shooters, nice little animal kind of face shaping to that. And you can, of course, have the character stand on a little engine. It's a very small build, but I think this one's gonna be uh, really cool with the kids. <laughs> like, this is a really good playset. I just cannot get over this uh, this stuff here. Uh, of course, General Ironclad's bull troops here, engine at the back, clip at the back if you wanna put his uh, hammer on there. We have some stud shooters on either side and a flame throwing gun at the front. That's pretty epic, not gonna lie. And this also has a nice little bit where you can kind of push it down and it'll kind of go back. Um, and then we have Pigsy here on his little flying food truck, essentially. Very epic here uh, with the stud shooter clipped onto the side. You can also clip this onto the side. You have a printed little eyebrow piece there, which we actually end up seeing in the uh, Pigsy's food truck actual set. So very cool. You got the snout of the pig, the ears and everything. So it kind of fits in there. Very 
beautiful, beautiful little build. And then finally, while I'm not a huge mech fan, Monkey Kid does get a mech for this build. It's got kind of like some antennas or whatever here. He fits in there with the Monkey Kid logo. A lot of stickers on this set, by the way, if you haven't noticed already. There you go. And uh, his arms posable. Kind of like uh, one of the Ninjago mechs from early 2019, I think I owned. And this just kind of reminds me of that stud shooter. It's got his staff here and of course his legs are posable feet posable um quite a nice little design but uh, not huge for me like I, just like i said not in the max but i think uh kids may enjoy it for the playset value aspect of it these don't really add a lot for me personally as like a display person but uh, i can see them going a long way as far as playability goes for something like this set and here is the boat i cannot say enough good things about this boat. On the box, it looks smaller than I feel like it is in real life. Like I thought it was gonna be smaller than this. This thing is a monstrosity of a Lego boat build. It is 26 studs wide, I believe, and it's widest up there, like at the back top there where it's kind of curves out a little. So it is a very, very wide boat. I was very surprised by that. I just, I don't know why I didn't expect it, but it just didn't scream out that it was gonna be as wide as it was to me on the box art where it's like at that angle or whatever, just, I don't know. And then uh, as far as its its length here, it's also pretty lengthy. You guys can see from front to back, there is definitely definitely a large amount of space. So we're going to start at the front of the ship and kind of work our way back on the exterior and then we'll open it up and get to the interior. This has a lot to unpack quite literally inside. So the set is beautifully designed. It's got these great like bumper pieces that actually work really well to make up the exterior of the boat here. And obviously it's not a perfectly shaped boat like right in real life. It wouldn't quite work like this, but it actually works really, really well for what we have here. And at the front, there's a little caution piece that is actually printed. A lot of stickers on this set though like I mentioned earlier little logos and stuff everywhere but the first and maybe my favorite little hidden feature here on this set is right here you actually just pull up on what looks like a little canister or whatever and out comes a stud shooter six stud shooter ready to rock and roll and the way to shoot this would be to go ahead and spin your crab on top and I mean is if, I mean, if that's not the coolest like hidden stud shooter feature you've ever seen I don't know what is I think if you are ever not gonna, if you're an anti-stud shooter person, you're ever not gonna complain about a stud shooter, this is the one to not complain about. It is incredibly well hidden and such a fun way to do it. So you can see, and then there's even like a little space for a pilot, which we'll be able to get to a lot easier when we um, actually open the set. But my God, is that not an epic little feature at the front end of this ship. You have some grating up here, which adds some nice texture to the front of it. A bunch of piping and such. We also have the cat door here for the cat who I think is actually inside the build right now but the cat can just come in and out of that as it pleases and you can also see a little logo for that vent and pipe again little cones throughout the build fire extinguisher rather large fire extinguisher I might add they also use these like the spinning pieces that they would sometimes use like in the bottom of chairs in, like Lego City or whatever kind of inverted here to create a nice texture on whatever that is supposed to be and you'll see that on both sides of the ship. You can see the no ironclad bull uh, logo there. And then some logo for like some alien octopus type thing on a ladder. Interesting look. Red, yellow, and blue for the shipping containers are the main colors here. You have a monkey kind of graffiti logo there. You have a Lego hand under a faucet there. Not really sure what that is supposed to be getting across a pressure gauge, some solar panels down here. They have maybe some little food growing or flowers or whatever they're trying to grow, a little water bottle. So many little details, it's so epic. We have a teal piece, we have a teal tile piece, like the eight by 16 piece, and it says DH Shipping Company. So I'm sure that that has something to do with whatever the story is. And you have kind of the uh, Chinese lanterns up here, just such a dense build. Megaphone piece being used to create a speaker up there to uh, broadcast whatever message they may have. Another Pigsy uh, box there with a trash can next to it. Not sure if it's supposed to be in the trash can or not. We'll leave it at that. 
09 logo, not sure what the 09 represents. And then we actually have very cool here in light blue, one of the roller coaster pieces. So that's a nice touch. And I think some people may really enjoy that. Uh, this may have also been in like Friends or Unikitty in light blue, but looks good in light blue here. Uh, we have little access hatches to the interior of the uh, ship here. We have a little ladder leading up to a crane. The ladder is such a nice touch for a crane that doesn't even really use a minifigure, but the crane here spins very strong, very nice build and it's actually going to be able to hold uh, sandy like on the front of the box so he can just grab on to the crane with the hook and then you can kind of spin him around uh, as you please like you see on uh, the front of the box it's not maybe a perfect connection i have had him fall off but it seems pretty good and it's good for a little fun swinging from time to time if that's what you want to do you have some tires on the side of the uh, boat and those are typically used on actual boats uh, to just kind of stop any thing from really banging into the side of the ship when you're docking. So that's kind of an interesting uh, little detail that really I think adds a lot of depth to a build like this. At the very back here, you have some sort of communications tower, of course, with a satellite dish, maybe another type of speaker there. Of course, the big pole piece to get you up there. You have the Monkey Kid logo on a nice uh, two by four plate sticker with a small control panel on the other side of that to send out your communications. Nice little build up here, kind of the highest point of the ship is gonna be the top of that uh, antenna. There's some clips at the back there if you wanna clip anything on. Nice touch with the octane colored canister there uh, under that. But yeah, that is pretty much the exterior of the ship. Maybe a quick look at the backside, not too much going on there, pretty flat to be honest. Maybe one of the more disappointing sections of the ship, but the ship does open up, so. Let's do it. So to open said ship, you're pretty much just wanna grab it in the middle here and pull it apart and you are more or less set. I will say the connections in the back are a little bit weaker than I would like, but uh, it does work well enough. Like it's not a perfect set by any means. We'll spend a quick second here looking at the back side of the ship when it's open. You can see you don't have any like thing different really than what you see to the exterior of the ship normally. The interior though is absolutely killer. So many different rooms, so many little details. Let's start at the left here with the mech's landing pad. So you've got a beautiful detail sticker for the Monkey Kids mech. You've got another one of those octan type of gas canisters. You've got another big pipe running in there with a wheel to kind of turn it on and off, I assume. A ladder for the inside of it, as well as some tools with a small bench off to the left. But perhaps the killer feature out of all of this is the ability to take Monkey Kids mech and have him actually be in this workshop area. And of course you will be able to close the ship with all of this stuff back inside of the ship so we're going to leave that in there as we go along but it does fit in there perfectly there's plenty of space in there and just so you do know these uh these top roof panels so when the ship's closed you can actually like open them and access the the inside without having to actually open it so that is an option off to the right you'll find some tools with a small empty area where you can actually place a uh, little ship of yours just in there for storage and it can also be accessed from the exterior by pulling up on the side panels like so you can close that back down but we'll leave that in there there's a couple of stickered control panels up under this center area and it is enough space to actually fit your big fig sandy in there as the box does show on the back and he's got a couple of computer screens at his disposal within the space Moving farther off to the right, we have another empty spot for another vehicle there, as well as more tools for your Monkey Kid mech or whatever vehicles you're gonna be working on. So probably these vehicles are gonna be using those tools. And this may be my favorite room of the entire build. We'll take the roof off to take a look at this one, make, make it a little bit easier for us. We have the cat here, who is a beautiful new Mohawk style cat with a mean muggin face. It's a small sandcastle litter box style house for it to inhabit. It is pretty crazy looking. It really matches the aesthetic of Sandy. This giant net, which is like essentially like a hammock bed, is for Sandy there. Very, very beautiful and big dude and it fits in perfectly. You've got a full bathroom here for your pets and your uh, male and female characters. Removing the sandcastle gives us a better view of it, but there is a toilet, there is a plunger, there's a little sandbox something, and then of course a sink. So quite an interior for that bathroom there. A small detail, one that I think is kind of hard to reach at, especially for me because my hands are bigger, I guess. We've got a red couch, yellow mug, a little TV remote on the nightstand there. And the TV is actually on a bit of a swivel there, so we can actually see they're playing a game and it says, try again. I know that game. I don't know the name of it, but I definitely recognize that as a game I feel like I've played before. Maybe something similar that they're kind of trying to get the vibe of there. So comment below what that exactly is. 
It can, like I said, close up with the Mac and other vehicles hidden inside of the Monkey Kid uh, Team HQ boat. And just like that, everything is good to go. And since it does come apart so easily, you may be worried about picking it up. You don't really have to worry. Just grab it from the front and the back at the same time like this, and you're pretty much set to go. I would say this is not a one-hand hold, though you definitely got to hold this set with two hands to... Uh, properly move it anywhere because of its large size. So $170 for this set. Is it worth it? Absolutely. This set is one of my favorite non-LEGO Star Wars sets ever. I, I kind of liken it to the LEGO Apocalypse Burke set with kind of the container vibes. It's, it's such a cool and interesting build. It really is fun the whole entire way. I couldn't remember a boring moment from the build. It really just is really it really just is interesting in that way. The building instructions are engaging, especially for younger kids. If you're buying this as a gift for a kid, you know, it is recommended for ages 10 and up build wise, and that's probably about fair. Um, but if you want to get a kid like age nine to 12, this set as like the coolest gift you can get that is just like the most play value you could possibly imagine, this may be the one. I know it's expensive, maybe like a Christmas gift, obviously, but like, Holy crap, does this set deliver on so many levels. Even for someone like me that's probably just going to put this on a shelf and look at it, I can appreciate this set for its play value as well. It has a lot to offer, and mechs, and mohawks, and cats with mohawks, and a pig with a stud shooter, a hidden stud shooter in the front here, which may be my favorite stud shooter feature ever on a Lego set, an epically fleshed out interior, a crane, communications, like there is so much. The bad guys are even really neat in this set. It just has so so much to offer that I don't think a lot of other Lego sets uh, can really match what this set has uh, at the price point. No, unfortunately the boat will not float, but I'm gonna give this set a 9.5 out of 10. There are small things like maybe the connection between the two halves of the boat that is a little bit finicky at times. You know, there are small things that the set could potentially be improved upon, although I'm sure the designers tried everything and this is kind of the best thing they could come up with as far as stuff like that. But wow, am I impressed by my first uh, touch of Monkey Kid here with this giant Lego Monkey Kid Team HQ. So let me know what you guys think about this new set in the comments section below. It is incredible.